Hi, ladies and gents. This time we are talking about pH indicators. And pH indicators are a collection of chemicals that change color typically when they are in solutions that are acidic or basic and at a variety of pHs. And I personally love indicators. They're quite beautiful and you can do some fun things with them. So let's talk about some common indicators. Sometimes indicators are going to be in liquid solutions and you can use these solutions to test a variety of different kinds of uh, water or liquid or different chemicals that you're working with. Sometimes the indicators you're going to work with are going to be pieces of paper that have been saturated with the specific chemical. That chemical has been allowed to dry and then that piece of test paper um, is comes with some sort of a paper key. Uh, you can use the paper, test it on an acid, a base, whatever, and then hold it up to the key to see what you have. Most of the pH indicators are originally plant-based. Um, a lot of plant-based compounds are highly, highly colored and do change color in a variety of pH. One of the classic elementary school chemical experiments to be done is red cabbage juice. If you take red cabbage and you cook it, the water that it is boiled in will come out to be a dark purple color. And red cabbage juice, when it is put into a variety of different solutions of a variety from basic to acidic pHs will turn a variety of colors. So it's by itself, red cabbage juice is a pretty good wide range pH indicator. But a lot of other uh, deeply purple colored liquids can also be used. Um, blueberries can be used. I have heard people use grape soda. I have heard people use grape juice. Uh, juice boxes have been used. Um, beets can be used. They're going to have a slightly different group of coloring than you're going to get from red cabbage juice. And one of my personal favorites, because I'm a gardener, are hydrangeas. Hydrangeas, you can tweak the color of your hydrangea bushes, whether you want them more blue or you want them more pink, by using acidic or basic additives to your soil. So you are messing with the pH of plants and the outcome is a variety of different colors, and that has to do with the chemistry involved with these molecules. Now, litmus paper is a pH indicator that has been in use for over 500 years. Um, litmus is actually a mixture of extracts from a variety of lichens, lichens you, you find on the barks of trees, typically, and old stumps in the woods. Um, these were extracted, of a whole, it's not just one lichen, but many of them uh, were powdered and dried, and then solutions of these were mixed up. Well, this litmus paper from these lichens, uh, when it was put together and put on some paper and saturated, what they found was that pink litmus had a tendency to turn blue when you are dealing with a base, and this is the way I always remember it, blue is a base, the blue, the bees go together, and that Blue litmus turns pink when you are dealing with an acid. So acids tend to turn pink and blues tend to be basic. And that's the litmus paper. And one of the reasons why we use the phrase a litmus test, um, you probably use this in your elementary school, junior high, even high school career, because this is such a common pH paper. But I want you to understand also that this does not change just at seven, meaning everything higher than seven is a base or everything lower than seven is an acid. There is a range over which indicators change color. So litmus paper actually changes color. Um, anything below 4.5 is then going to be red. So you have to be quite acidic before you get a red indication out of litmus. And everything above 8.5 before it turns blue as a base. Um, in the middle there, if the paper starts out as a purple color, it's going to remain a purple color. So it has to be quite a reasonably strong acid or base, or 
before you actually get some sort of color change. Another one of the common indicators that is used in chemistry labs is phenylphthalein. Okay, I'm going to say that again because it's a fun word to say, phenylphthalein. And phenylphthalein is clear in an acidic solution. It turns a beautiful magenta pink in an alkaline or a basic solution. And in chem labs, if you take a full-blown complex chemistry lab, you're going to do titration. Titration involves slowly adding drop by drop uh, one solution of an acid or a base into another in a way to quantitatively determine the concentration of a solution. And phenylphthalein is a wonderful way to determine the end point of that chemical reaction. Uh, and it's also a very striking um, and easily visualized end point when that pH changes. And it's close to, but again, not exactly at 7 or neutral. If you watch crime shows, I, I love a lot of murder mystery shows. I love the puzzle of them. Um, sometimes they will test a weapon or they will test something to see if blood was present. Well, sometimes you're going to see them actually use phenylphthalein in that test on TV. And what they're only testing for is to see if it is a base. Um, it is a quick and dirty test. It won't test, necessarily tell them if they have blood versus another base. But if they find a red smudge somewhere at a crime scene, a quick phenyl the thaline test is going to determine if they have ketchup, which is definitely an acid, versus possibly blood, which will be basic. Bromthymol blue, again, a really wonderful indicator. Bromthymol blue um, is blue in the basic pHs. It is going to be more yellowy green when it gets slightly acidic. And right around neutral, it is kind of a, a tealy green. Um, this is wonderful for hard or soft water. You might actually use bromothymol blue, whether you know it or not, if you have a fish tank. Um, very often, if you want to determine the pH of your water so your fish don't die, uh, bromothymol blue will be on a test strip to determine exactly what your pH of your water is. Um, hard waters usually contain metals, calcium, magnesium, and other hard metals. Well, metals are going to make things more basic. And if you have hard water and you test it with bromothymol blue, you're going to end up with water that's going to be a little bit more basic and you're going to end up with it more on this blue range. Um, soft water, deionized water, it's going to be closer to the greens and the yellowy green end of things. And so it's a it's a nifty thing for right around that neutral pH range to determine exactly where you are. And it's very visual and it's one of my absolute favorite indicators. There are multiple, multiple, multiple indicators. This pH chart from Flynn Scientific, which is a great company that we buy a lot of chemicals from, um, this indicates some of them. I love their names. Thymol blue, methyl orange, bromphenol blue, Congo red, bromcreosol green, methyl red, bromthymol blue, phenyl red, phenylphthalein, and thymolphthalein. Now each of these has a, a striking color difference at a different pH. So if you look at thymol blue, it's going to be magenta up here around one, um, then change to orange, then to yellow, then to a light blue, and then a dark blue with a pH bigger than about a 9. You go to something like a methyl red. Methyl red is going to be a pink below about a 4.5, then turn red in that 5-6 zone, and then be yellow in that neutral to base zone. So if a chemist wants a specific pH that they're testing for, they're going to choose the indicator that is going to make that color change at that specific pH point. Universal indicators, uh, very often you're going to find these and you're going to work with these. Um, what they typically are, they're either going to be in solution or you're going to find them in a paper form. This is many, many, many of this group of indicators plus some others that have been mixed and they have been mixed 
on paper. They have been mixed in a liquid solution, carefully mixed, so that you get a distinctive color at every pH. And so this is very handy. Sometimes they are called wide range indicators, um, and they're wonderful in a variety of different lab situations. Not going to give you a quantitative measurement of hydronium ion concentration, but they're going to give you a really good, quick and dirty measurement of the pH and an idea of kind of where you are. Well, that will do it for pH indicators, and uh, we'll talk to you more later. Bye-bye.